Louis Grizzard, great comedian. My 14-year-old loves listening to Louis Grizzard's stand-up routines. He's been dead now for a while. He was a columnist for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, a great Southern comedian. And I have to apologize because I'm going to tell the joke. One of my listeners is the pastor of the church <laughs> that is involved in the joke. So Louis Grizzard from Moreland, Georgia. Uh, and to this day, the Moreland Methodist Church and the Moreland Baptist Church are across the street from each other. And Grizzard was a Methodist, and he would tell jokes, and, and the Baptists were the butt of the jokes. And he told this joke one time. It's a great joke. That Moreland, the, the churches at the time in, in the 70s, 60s, 70s, they were so poor that the best they could afford was a bicycle for the pastors. So this is long old joke from the 1960s, folks. Don't don't d those of you in Moreland don't don't go heckling your pastors this weekend because th this is just ju just joke from the 1960s. The Moreland Baptist preacher, the Moreland Methodist preacher, they would meet at the local gas station every Sunday, review their sermons, and encourage each other before church. One Sunday. The Methodist preacher pedaled up on the bicycle the church had given him, and the Baptist, he walked up, and the Methodist said, Brother, what happened to your bicycle? The Baptist says, Brother, I believe a member of my congregation has stolen my bicycle. And the Methodist was aghast. And he says, Brother, I don't care what you were planning on preaching today. Let me give you some, some advice as an older pastor. You get in that pulpit today, and you preach on hell, fire, and brimstone. You preach on the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the Lord God Almighty, and you preach on the Ten Commandments. And when you get to thou shalt not steal, you bear down on them. They'll get the feeling bad. They'll bring your bicycle back. And the brother said, I'll do it. So the next Sunday comes along and the Methodist preacher pedals up on his bicycle to the gas station and the Baptist preacher pedals up on his bicycle and the Methodist says, Hallelujah, brother, miracle has occurred. Did you do what I told you to do? Did you preach on hell, fire, and brimstone and the Holy Spirit and the saving grace of Jesus Christ? Did you preach on the Ten Commandments and did you preach thou shalt not steal and somebody brought your bicycle back? And the pastor of First Baptist Moreland says, Brother, not exactly. He says, brother, I did preach on hellfire and brimstone, and I preached on the Holy Spirit. I preached on the saving power of Jesus Christ, and I preached on the Ten Commandments. When I got to thou shalt not commit adultery, I remember where I left my bicycle. <laughs> I love the joke. There's a reason I say this, and I tell you this joke. A lot of times in this country, uh, we have over years divided ourselves up uh, denominationally. Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Catholics, Orthodox, the add in Jews, Muslims, Hindus, you name it. We, we've divided ourselves up. And each denomination or inside religions, they look at others bad. Like, for example, I, I grew up. Protestant. I grew up Baptist. I'm in a PCA Presbyterian church. We put the fun in fundamentalism. I can't tell you the number of relatives I have who think that all Catholics go to hell. I I, I mean this. Some of my very best friends in life are better Christians than me. They're Catholic. And I got relatives and friends in the South who are like, ah, oh, they're a bunch of Mary worshipers. They don't understand them. They don't like the Pope. They, they see it as bad. Uh, some of my, my wife's most ardent prayer warriors for her are Catholics. But the Baptists and the Methodists, uh, the Catholics are something else. So those Episcopalians too, I make jokes about the Episcopalians. We, we divide each other up into denominations and the good ones and the bad ones, the mainline ones, the ones that have left the faith, a lot of Episcopalians. Now you got the United Methodists walking out the door of the PCUSA. We divide ourselves up that way. And we have for generations in this country. And we can make jokes about each other. We can make jokes. I mean, we can all laugh within Protestantism, particularly in the South. The Methodist Church and the Baptist Church are next door to each other. We In the town that I grew up in, in Louisiana, not Dubai, um, the First Baptist Church was right next door to the First Methodist Church, and they were all related to each other. When I was a kid, I was probably 10 or 11 years old, probably 11. My grandmother had a heart attack in the middle of church. 
and we were sitting in church, uh, and we were singing Holy, 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 and the lady behind me nudged me, and I looked over, and it looked like my grandmother was having a seizure. She had slumped over. It was just me and her. Now, my oldest sister was with her boyfriend, who was uh, my mom's best friend, who I grew up calling her my Aunt Shirley. It was her son was dating my sister, and they were in the Methodist church, except they had skipped to go to the movies. When the 911 call went off, half the Methodist church came over to the Baptist church, and they were all relatives. My grandmother's husband, my grandfather, was in the Methodist church. My grandmother was in the Baptist church. The only time my grandfather ever went to the Baptist church was to date my grandmother. The moment they got married, he promptly started going back to the Methodist church. Can't tell you what he said about the Baptist. It was not polite for radio. But when the Methodist got over there, the preacher then when my grandmother was able to get back to church at Monaster, next time she had a heart attack in church to please wait for the offering plate to be passed before all the Methodists showed up. And you could have these jokes. The problem is over time, we've kind of shifted as a country. And the jokes are now the Republicans versus the Democrats. But over time, that's shifted. Just as a lot of Protestants more and more see uh, post-Christian faiths as, as out of the faith, as pagan, and then, then you have so many Southerners in particular who see Catholics as bad. In this country now, we see left and right, Democrat, Republican as bad. And they're no longer the butt of jokes so much as they're, they're the monsters in the story. Democrats see this with Republicans. Republicans are the monsters of the story. Republicans, Paul Ryan, they're going to shove grandma off the cliff. Uh, Donald Trump is leading an insurrection against the United States, no matter how unsuccessful it was. And I am more and more surrounded by Republican friends who call Democrats evil. And their evil is you pick the policy that you don't like on the Democratic side and you say it's evil. Abortion comes up a lot. Transgenderism comes up a lot. And full disclosure, I agree. But also, we're all sinners. And Democrats see Republicans as evil too. Now, that's a long way around getting to a point. And I realize, start with the joke we can all laugh at, get to the point that no one's going to like. A few weeks ago, I said on this program that we're not a nation in decline, we're a nation being held back, or I wish Republicans at least would talk about it in that way, that we're being held back by the Democrats. We have great potential, but the Democrats have held us back. The Democrats have chosen for us to decline and have put their arms around us that we may not run forward so that other nations can catch up to us. The number of people, I'm still getting angry, angry emails. The number of people who say, but you're wrong, we are in decline. We, we are in decline. I can't believe you can't see we're in decline. I have long said on this program, there is a spiritual problem in this country and there is spiritual decline going on in the country. But a lot of people have taken that to mean across the board, everything is in decline that the nation has chosen to decline, not that the Democrats have just handcuffed us so we can't rush forward and the bureaucracy and all to try to let other nations catch up to degrade us for climate change, but no, the entire nation is in decline and this is terrible. I, I, I want to say something here. It is a choice for you to decide that. It is a choice for you to focus on the thing you hate the most instead of the thing you like the most. It is a choice for you to be obsessed with this. And we see where this goes. A 14-year-old boy in July was found dead in the mountains of Colorado, malnourished, 40 pounds underweight when he died, preserved in the snow. His mother and his aunt were found in a tent near where his body was found. They had internalized the decline. They chose to focus on the decline, and the focus on the decline grew their despair. And their despair did not then translate itself as marching in the streets and going to protests and hating the other side. Their despair manifested itself as we need to become preppers, move off the grid and take care of ourselves. And they weren't capable of doing it. And the boy, the mother wanted to save from the decline of society. She killed him. 
and herself and her sister who went to try to help them because the sister didn't believe that they were going to be capable of doing it. The sister went to her death trying to help the mom and the son survive. They embraced the idea of decline so much and internalized it so much they decided to flee. We see this manifest in this way in this country where people saw an election in 2020 that didn't go their way and they concluded only one thing could have happened. It must have been stolen and they bought the apologetics that there's no way Biden could get 80 million votes. No one's ever gotten that before. Pay no attention to population increases in the United States. They believed all the apologetics and to this day, I have people listening right now starting to yell at the radio by me raising this point. They decided to embrace the lie to explain the decline, to display explain the despair instead of coming to terms with what actually happened and choosing their life accordingly. And the left does the same thing. The left looks at this and they can't relate. They've chosen to embrace the despair of decline as well. They've chosen actually to make a conscious choice to decline because they believe they must save the planet, that the people are irredeemable, but the planet may save itself. Both sides have concluded decline. They, both sides, have chosen to view that as opposed to just unshackle us and let us run. Whether you choose to do that or not, I think a lot of people willfully misunderstood my point that a Republican candidate could offer people a lot of hope by saying, we can let loose the American generation, let loose the economy. In fact, if we see meaningful improvement, people might not think we're declining. But the Democrats have made the choice to stifle us. Republicans can make the choice to unleash the American economy. It's a choice they got to make. But too many people have chosen to despair because of decline. Too many people have embraced the idea of overall decline of the United States when, by the way, we're still head and shoulders above everyone else. Do you know Europeans have now declined so much in terms of GDP compared to us? that um, we are like head and shoulders above them. The British economy now stands to be equivalent to the economy of the state of Mississippi. The French economy is now equivalent to the economy of Oregon. Like individual European nations are now so far behind us, they can be compared to and are behind most American states. The Chinese economy is doing so much worse than ours now. We're actually doing very good as a society and very few of you feel it because the existential dread of the cultural currents of the nation. And that is a choice you've made to focus on those negative things. The media, of course, highlights those negative things. And that's not to say those negative things aren't there. But where you spend your emotional energy focused, you wind up being led there. My wife tells me when you ride a motorcycle, which she does, if you look in a direction, your motorcycle goes in that direction. And so many Americans on both sides have chosen to look off the cliff. We're headed off the cliff. Instead of turning their head and looking at the good in each other, loving our neighbor, and deciding as a nation we're going to move past our differences as best we can while still maintaining them, because we still choose to believe in America as the best place. There are those, absolutely, on the left, who've chosen to decide America is a terrible place. But you know what? There's a growing number of people on the right who have believed the same thing. And they have chosen to look off the cliff and head in that direction. You've got to decide for yourself. I can't decide for you. Are you going to look off the cliff and go that way? Or are you going to look to a better tomorrow and go that way? It's your choice to do it. But I would suggest to you, as long as Biden and Trump are the dominant leaders of both parties, both sides are looking off the cliff. Instead of choosing a different path forward, decline is a choice. Don't delude yourself into thinking it's just the Democrats making it.